Okay, now for question number five from um, M1, January 2019, International A-Level. Here we have a question about statics. A small metal box of mass six kilograms is attached at B to two ropes B, P and B, Q, two separate ropes. Okay, so it's not one rope, it's two separate ropes, so they have different tensions in each of those. The fixed points P and Q are on a horizontal ceiling PQ, which is 3.5 meters long, the box hangs in equilibrium at a vertical distance of 2 meters below the line PQ, with the ropes in a vertical plane and with angle BQP being 45 degrees, as shown in figure 3. The box is modeled as a particle and the ropes are modeled as light in extensible strings. So find the tension in BP and the tension in BQ. Okay, so I've, I've just got this diagram down here so I can see what i'm doing when i'm writing my equations okay so i have let's just put some of the, the things that we need in here what we need uh, well we've got basically here the tension in this rope i'll call that tq and the tension in this rope tp these are two separate ropes not one rope it's not like you know um particles connected by one string this is Two different strings connected to the particle and you've got the weight of the particle of the particle which acts straight down it said it's six kilograms isn't it six kilograms so that's six g newtons six g newtons down here okay now what we need to do here is resolve the forces now i know that this angle here is definitely 90 degrees and if that's 90 degrees, this must be 45 degrees. And if that's 45 degrees, the distance between here and here must be the same as the distance between here and here, because this must be an isosceles triangle. So this is 2 meters. And if that's 2 meters, then the distance between P and this point must be 1.5 meters. Okay, so if I want to resolve the forces TP and TQ horizontally and vertically, then I'm, this is... T, Q, horizontal, well, you got these and these, okay, so that's 45 degrees, what I need to do now is I need to find what this angle is here, then I can resolve TP horizontally and vertically, okay, so let's do that, let's find out what the angle is, now the angle we can find using this, this right angle triangle here, you've got 1.5 and 2, so let me call the angle theta for now, we can say that opposite over adjacent, so tan theta, is equal to 1.5 over 2 okay so 1.5 over 2 which is like 15 over 20 so tan theta is equal to 15 over 20 and that's equal to divide by 5 that's 3 divide by 5 that's 3 over 4 okay so tan theta equals 3 over 4 you could say so if that's theta, that's 3, that's 4, that's 5. So we can say the sine of theta will therefore be 3 over 5. And the cosine of theta will therefore be 4 over 5. I can find the angle itself, but I can find the ratio. I think finding the ratio makes the calculations a bit easier. So now let's resolve the forces horizontally. So you're going to have um, this direction, you're going to have TQ. Um, times sine of 45 45 actually doesn't matter because both sides are 45 is equal to TP times and it's going to be the uh, sine of theta okay so you can say that sine of 45 is root 2 over 2 so you've got root 2 over 2 times TQ equals sine theta equals three fifths equals three fifths three fifths let me write that neater three fifths of tp come on three fifths of tp okay so there we have one equation from them being resolved horizontally now i'm going to resolve vertically if i resolve vertically i've got i've got TQ times cosine 45. TQ times cosine 45. 
and plus tp times cosine theta is equal to 6g okay so that will help me find another equation so cosine 45 is root 2 over 2 so I got root 2 over 2 times TQ and cosine theta is 4 fifths plus 4 fifths times TP is equal to 6G okay so um, I need to find TP and TQ so I can use simultaneous equations to do so okay in fact what I can do is I can say this just change this so it says this minus 3p 3 fifths tp equals 0 then I can use the fact that these two have got the same coefficient I can subtract those two equations and I can find what tp is so let me just do that on the next page let me just take this copy this on the next page smaller all right so now what we can do is I can call this one equation one and this one equation two and I can say equation two minus equation one if I subtract these two equations this will this will disappear so I have four fifths 3p minus minus three fifths the uh, tp which is seven fifths tp is equal to 6g minus zero which is 6g so tp is going to be 30 g over 7 newtons how does it tell us the right answer okay we can leave it in terms of g that's fine if you want to also write it in terms of you know decimal places you could do so you have 30 times 9.8 divided by 7 so you could write this as 42 newtons if you wish okay yeah you could write that as 42 newtons if you wish and that's fine okay that's perfectly fine okay and now we've got to find what TQ is now we can use the fact that we have these two equations here so for example we could say that um, from this equation I guess this is probably easier uh, you got TQ let's just TQ if I rearrange that equation I'll get TQ is equal to three-fifths tp times 2 over root 2 right if i rearrange that that's right so that gives you tq is equal to uh, 6 over 5 root 2 times tp which is 6 over 5 root 2 times 30g over 7 okay 5 goes into 6 and 36 times that gives you 36 G over 7 root 2 if you multiply both top and bottom by root 2 we end up with uh, 36 times root 2 times G over 14 7 times 2 okay so you can say that uh, 2 goes into that 18 root 2 times g over 7 okay which gives you if you want to round it in decimal places 18 times root 2 times 9.8 divided by 7 gives you 35.6 so you can say 35.6 or 36 so 35.6 newtons or if you want you can say 36 newtons because we use G you can do 2SF or 3SF any of those three answers will be acceptable for TQ and there we have the answer for that question the tension in P and the tension in Q
Okay, now uh, another method of answering this question, because we have three forces acting and it's in equilibrium, is in order uh, is to make make a, a triangle because it's in equilibrium. There's three forces acting. What we can do is we can make a vector diagram. So, for example, I can draw T tension in Q like this, and then where that ends, I start tension in P, and then. Where that ends, I can draw the angle, the um, the weight, six newtons, and they should where where they all end up should be where you started from because it's in equilibrium. So that's T Q, and that's T P, and that's your six G newtons. Okay. Now, if we look at this diagram compared to this diagram here, we can see that this angle is forty-five degrees. Okay, so this is 45 degrees. Okay, now if I find these two angles, I'll be able to then use a sine rule to find TP and TQ because I know this is 60 newtons. I'll have a pair of opposites and then I can use these. So finding this angle here will help me find, of course, that angle there as well. So basically, the angle um, at this, the angle over here, for example, okay, is the angle between TP and the vertical. Okay, TP and the vertical. All right, you can say that. Or you could say even, for example, this angle here, this whole angle here is the angle between TP and TQ. The angle between TP and TQ is the same as this angle here. And that's the angle that we've got there. Okay, so if I was to continue this along. Okay, this is the line of TP and TQ. So this angle over here is the same as this angle here. Okay, so it's going to be basically uh, 180 minus these two together. Okay, this angle here is going to be 180 minus the sum of those two. Okay, you could think of it in that sense. Okay, so that's the angle between TP, TQ going that way and TP going that way is this angle over here. Okay, so let me call that angle alpha. So basically finding what theta is will help us. Now we know that the tan of theta is three quarters. Okay, 1.5 over 20, which is 15 over 2, sorry, which is 15 over 20, which is 3 quarters. Okay, so that means the angle theta will be, if we take a calculator, the angle theta, we press shift tan of 3 quarters. So the angle theta will be 36.869. 36. 0.869 okay that's the angle over here so if I add to that 45 that will give me 81.869 so that's the whole angle there so the angle I want is 180 minus that so 180 minus the answer gives me 98.130 so that's the angle here 98.130 that's the angle over here <coughs> okay and the angle that we need on this side is going to be 180 minus this angle. So let me save this angle. Let me store this angle as angle A. Okay. And then the angle on this side is 180 minus 98.130 plus 45. So if I add 45 to this and I do 180 minus the answer, I get 36.869. So this is 36.869. Okay, which is the same as the angle between TP and this line there. Okay, so let me store that as angle um, B. Okay, now I can now use the sine rule to find TP and TQ. So I know that TP over the sine of 45, that's opposite, is equal to 6G over the sine of 98.130 so therefore TP is going to be whoops the tension in P is therefore going to be 6G times sine 45 over sine 98.130 so I'm going to have 6 times 9.8 times sine 45 divided by the sine of 
98.130, which I think was a yes, it was a okay, and that gives me what have I done wrong here? I forgot to put the bracket here, okay, so that gives me 42. So TP is equal to 42, exactly what we found earlier, okay, and now we're going to find TQ. We know that TQ over 36 point the sine of 36.869 is equal to again 6g over the sine of 98.130 so it's almost the same as what we got earlier except i have to change this from sine 45 to the sine of our angle B, I think it was. 30, yeah, B. Okay, that gives us 35.638. So TQ is equal to 35.638. So you can say that's equal to 36 or 35.6. We've used, we've used G, so you can give it either in terms of 2SF or 3SF. And there we see we have exactly the same two answers for TP and TQ as we had earlier. Um, we got the answers 36, 35.6 to 36 and 42. So they're exactly the same. What's happened here? Everything's disappeared. That's weird. Anyway. So we have exactly the same answers as we got before in, in the last question. Okay.